and welcome once again to SFF 180. Thomas here, your host as always, and thank you for joining me. Now in this episode, 30 upcoming science fiction releases for your 2020 TBRs. Yeah, they're not going to know what hit them, are they? <laughs> now, in case you missed my 2020 fantasy video on Tuesday, there's the link right there. Also, I think I can say my voice is in much better shape today. All that tea and honey probably helped. I must have put away a gallon of the stuff while I was editing the other night. And yes, I know, I know I said Thursday for this one, but here we are, and I promise you, it's going to be worth the wait. So, science fiction for 2020. Now, as with my fantasy list, it is important to note that even with this many books, this video is not going to be comprehensive. For one thing, it only takes us to about the middle of October because most books that are scheduled for fall 2020 and beyond haven't been formally announced yet. There are going to be some high-profile titles you won't see here, but as I said in the other video, I am aware. I know there's a new Hunger Games novel on the way. I know that Christopher Paolini, of all people, yeah, the Aragon kid, has announced a massive 800-page tome of a space opera for later in the year. He's even grown a big old beard, so he looks like a proper science fiction writer now. We'll see how that goes, but it's not a major priority for me. The books in this video are generally the ones I have my eye on the most, and if there are other SF releases that you are really excited about that I don't mention, then by all means, let us know in the comments. And remember, all release dates are tentative and subject to change without notice. Now, for my first book, I am cheating a little bit because this one is slated for release on December 31st. But let's be honest, any book with the misfortune to be released in that holiday week between Christmas and New Year's, when all anyone is thinking about is eating and partying and taking long naps, is not only likely to get lost in the shuffle, but anyone who does read it isn't going to get around to it until the New Year anyway, so it's effectively a 2020 book. I decided to add it just because it sounds cool. Splintergrate is a novel by Deborah Taramis Christian, who has published in the past just as Deborah Christian. It's being described as a cyberpunk take on Kushiel's Dart. On the planet Lindir, you will find the Between World, home to the licensed entertainers of the Sabdani Empire. There, at a palatial house of domination called Trist, Professional dominatrix Kess has become a celebrity attraction whose fame and exclusivity draws a rarefied clientele. Her most devoted client is Janice, a major crime boss on Lindir and elsewhere. But when a high-powered imperial authority decides she wants Janice out of the way, she identifies Kess as his greatest vulnerability. The seductive domino would never betray a client's trust, but a mortal threat to her between-world sisters forces her cooperation with Janice's enemy. This is described as a standalone set in the same future as Christian's debut novel, Mainline, which got some attention when it came out way back in 1996 for being a very rare example of a book getting published out of the slush pile. On January 14th, Del Rey releases The Vanished Birds by debut author Simon Jimenez. It's the story of a mute young boy with mysterious powers and an even more mysterious origin who falls into the care of Nia, a solitary starship pilot who has no close human connections in her life due to living in a near-constant state of time dilation due to all her travels. But the powers that be are searching for the boy, and time is running out. On January 21st, can it be true? Are we finally, finally going to see William Gibson's forever-delayed new novel agency? It could happen. This book was originally slated to come out at least a two and possibly three years ago. I think I first featured it on my anticipated SF list back in 2017. Gibson rewrote much of it following the election of Trump in 2016, and now the book has been so extensively rewritten that it's now being pitched as a direct follow-up to The Peripheral, which Gibson released in 2014. It's about Verity Jane, gifted app whisperer, who takes a job as the beta tester for a new product, a digital assistant accessed through a pair of ordinary-looking glasses. Eunice, the disarmingly human AI in the glasses, manifests a face, a fragmentary past, and a canny grasp of combat strategy. 
Realizing that her cryptic new employers don't yet know how powerful and valuable Eunice is, Verity instinctively decides it's best that they don't. January 21st also sees the release of Tochi Onyabuchi's novella Riot Baby from Tor.com. Ella has a thing. She sees a classmate grow up to become a caring nurse, a neighbor's son murdered in a drive-by shooting. Things that haven't happened yet. Kev, born while Los Angeles burned around them, wants to protect his sister from a power that could destroy her. But when Kev is incarcerated, Ella must decide what it means to watch her brother suffer while holding the ability to wreck cities in her hands. Rooted in the hope that can live in anger, Riot Baby is as much an intimate family story as a global dystopian narrative. It burns fearlessly towards revolution and has quietly devastating things to say about love, fury, and the black American experience. Also on the 21st, Soho Press releases Chana Porter's The Seep, which is being aimed at fans of Jeff Vandermeer and Carmen Maria Machado. Trina is a 50-year-old trans woman whose life is irreversibly altered in the wake of a world-changing invasion by an alien entity called The Seep. Through The Seep, everything is connected. Capitalism falls, hierarchies and barriers are broken down, and if something can be imagined, it is possible. Trina's wife, Deba, begins to imagine what it might be like to be reborn as a baby, which will give her the chance at an even better life. And she moves on to a new existence. Heartbroken, Trina follows a lost boy she encounters, embarking on an unexpected quest. A strange elegy of love and loss, The Seep explores grief, alienation, and the ache of moving on. On February 11th, Angry Robot releases RWW Green's Light Years, set in a classist future in which trader Adam Sadik enters an arranged marriage with faster-than-light worm drive technology expert Hisako Sasuke at the urging of his mother, Manira, in the hopes the arrangement will provide the technology to make Adam's ship the fastest in the galaxy. This debut is drawing critical acclaim for its sophisticated world-building and emotionally resonant characters. On February 25th, Tor.com releases Nino Cipri's Fena, a rambunctious, touching story that blends all the horrors the multiverse has to offer with the everyday awfulness of low-wage work. When an elderly customer at a Swedish big-box furniture store, no, not that one, slips through a portal to another dimension, it's up to two minimum wage employees to track her across the multiverse and protect their company's bottom line. To find the missing granny, Ava and Jules will brave carnivorous furniture, swarms of identical furniture spokespeople, and the deep resentment simmering between them. Can friendship blossom from the ashes of their relationship? In infinite dimensions, all things are possible. Now, you won't usually see me add story collections to these lists, but when the authors Ken Liu, you have my attention. Saga Press releases The Hidden Girl and Other Stories on February 25th. This collection includes a selection of his science fiction and fantasy stories from the last five years. 16 of his best, plus a brand new novelette. And in addition to these stories, The Hidden Girl and Other Stories features an excerpt from book three in the Dandelion Dynasty series, The Veiled Throne. On March 3rd, Station Eleven meets Never Let Me Go in Katie Flynn's The Companions, set in an unsettling near future where the dead can be uploaded to machines and kept in service by the living. In the wake of a highly contagious virus, California is under quarantine. Sequestered in high-rise towers, the living can't go out, but the dead can come in. And they come in all forms, from sad rolling cans to manufactured bodies that can pass for human. 16-year-old Lilac is one of the less fortunate, least to family of strangers. But when she realizes she's able to defy commands, she throws off the shackles of servitude and runs away, searching for the woman who killed her. Futuristic forms of slavery appear to be a dystopic theme for the 3rd of March, because also on that day, Tor.com releases Docile, the debut novel by K.M. Spara, a science fiction parable about love and sex, wealth and debt, abuse and power. To be a docile is to be kept, body and soul, for the uses of the owner of your contract. To be a docile is to sell yourself, to pay your parents' debts, and buy your children's future. 
This story about a docile who stands up to the tycoon who owns his contract promises to be fairly explicit in its portrayals of abuse, but also a riveting drama about the worst kind of world we could get when human beings are valued only as financial commodity. If you'd rather go flying through space and blowing shit up, Mike Cole returns on March the 10th with the launch of a new series from Angry Robot, 16th Watch. A lifelong search and rescue woman, Coast Guard Captain Jane Oliver, is ready for a peaceful retirement. But when tragedy strikes, Oliver loses her husband and her plans for the future, and finds herself thrust into a role she's not prepared for. Suddenly, at the helm of the Coast Guard's elite SAR-1 lunar unit, Oliver is the only woman who can prevent the first lunar war in history, a conflict that will surely consume not only the moon, but Earth as well. Matt Ruff, an author known for writing darkly satirical books that take a scalpel to our political realities, returns with 88 Names, an immersive virtual reality epic about John Chu, a Sherpa, a paid guide to online role-playing games like the popular Call to Wizardry. Chu's new client, the pseudonymous Mr. Jones, claims to be a wealthy famous person with powerful enemies, and he's offering a ridiculous amount of money for a comprehensive tour of the world of virtual reality gaming. For Chu, this is a dream assignment. But as the tour gets underway, he begins to suspect that Mr. Jones is really... Well, I won't spoil that part. But the book is out March the 17th. On March 24th, the last human in the universe is on the run from a godlike intelligence in Zach Jordan's debut, The Last Human. Most days, Saria doesn't feel like the most terrifying creature in the galaxy. And most days, she can almost accept that she'll never know the truth, that she'll never know why humanity was deemed too dangerous to exist. That is, until an encounter with a bounty hunter and a miles-long kinetic projectile leaves her life and her perspective shattered. March 31st sees the release of Alex Irvine's novella Anthropocene Rag, described as a nanotech western. In the future United States, our own history has faded into myth, and traveling across the country means navigating wastelands and ever-changing landscapes. The country teems with monsters, and artificial intelligences recreate myths and legends of their human creators. Prospector Ed, an emergent AI who wants to understand the people who made him, assembles a ragtag team to reach the mythical Monument City. Also on March 31st, we get Providence, the new novel by Max Barry, the author of Jennifer Government. Seven years after first contact, Providence 5 launches, an enormous and deadly warship built to protect humanity from its greatest ever threat. On board is a crew of just four, tasked with monitoring their ship and reporting the war's progress to a mesmerized global audience by way of social media. But while pursuing the enemy across space, Gilly, Talia, Anders, and Jackson confront the unthinkable, their communications are cut, their ship decreasingly trustworthy and effective. To survive, they must win a fight that is suddenly and terrifyingly real. On April 7th, Del Rey releases Bonds of Brass, the first space opera for adult readers by acclaimed YA author Emily Skrutsky. In the first installment of her Bloodrite trilogy, a young pilot, Etienne, risks everything to save his best friend, the man he trusts most and might even love, only to learn that his friend is secretly the heir to a brutal galactic empire. On April 14th, Saga releases the U.S. edition of Vagabonds by Hao Jing Fang, the first Chinese woman to win the Hugo Award, in a translation by Ken Liu. A century after the Martian War of Independence, a group of kids are sent to Earth as delegates from Mars. But when they return home, they're caught between the two worlds, unable to reconcile the beauty and culture of Mars with their experiences on Earth. The story is narrated from two perspectives. Luo Jing, an 18-year-old girl from Mars who has spent the past five years on Earth, and Ignacio, a filmmaker in his late 20s from Earth on a job to document the delegates from Mars. Both Luo and Ignacio are trapped between worlds, with critics all around and always under suspicion, searching for where they truly belong. Hatchet releases Laura Lamb's Goldilocks on April 30th, described as The Handmaid's Tale meets The Martian. Despite increasing restrictions on the freedoms of women on Earth, 
Valerie Black is spearheading the first all-female mission to a planet in the Goldilocks Zone, where conditions are just right for human habitation. It's humanity's last hope for survival, and Naomi, Valerie's surrogate daughter and the ship's botanist, has been waiting her whole life for an opportunity like this, to step out of Valerie's shadow and really make a difference. But when things start going wrong on the ship, Naomi begins to suspect that someone on board is concealing a terrible secret, and realizes time for life on Earth may be running out faster than they feared. Probably the most anticipated space opera of the year arrives on May the 5th. Unless you've been living on an asteroid for the past several months, then you've probably already got Martha Wells' network effect added to your Goodreads. This is the fifth Murderbot adventure overall, and the first full-length novel. What's up with our favorite antisocial soap opera binging AI this time? Well, when Murderbot's human associates are captured and someone else from its past requires urgent assistance, Murderbot must choose between inertia and drastic action. Drastic action it is, then. On the 25th of May, Ferret Steinmetz drops Automatic Reload, an action-packed cyberpunk love story in which a grizzled mercenary with machine gun arms unexpectedly falls in love with a bioengineered assassin. Matt has a panic disorder, and Sylvia has PTSD, and they both go on the lam, determined to stop a sinister plot to create more super assassins like Sylvia. Between bloody gunfights, rampant car chases, and drone attacks, they team up to survive, and unexpectedly realize their messed up brain chemistry cannot overpower their very real chemistry. Now, I know some of you might be surprised to see Tamsin Muir's Harrow the Ninth on my list. After all, I gave Gideon the Ninth a very mixed review, feeling that it did not live up to the absolute tidal wave of hype that had built it up all through this year. But there was something about Muir's creative energy and willingness to aim high, even if her reach exceeded her grasp, that made me think that she is a strong emerging talent who's going to go places. So on June 2nd, the saga of the Locked Tomb trilogy continues, as Harrow Hark Nonagissimus, last necromancer of the Ninth House, is drafted by her emperor to fight an unwinnable war. On June 9th, Cowboy Bebop beats a fistful of dollars in, in John Murphy's Red Noise from Angry Robot. When an asteroid miner comes to Station 35 looking to sell her cargo and get back to the solitude she craves, she gets swept up in a three-way standoff with gangs and crooked cops. Faced with either taking sides or cleaning out the Augean stables, she breaks out the flamethrower. Now, it's always good to see something new from one of science fiction's old guard every once in a while. And on June 16th, legendary author David Gerald returns with Hella, set on a colony world where everything is oversized, especially the ambitions of the colonists. The trees are a mile high, the dinosaur herds are huge, and the weather is so extreme, the colonists have to migrate twice a year to escape the blistering heat of summer and the atmosphere-freezing cold of winter. Kyle is a neuroatypical young man with an implant that gives him real-time access to the colony's computer network, making him a very misunderstood savant. When an overburdened starship arrives, he becomes the link between the established colonists and the refugees from a ravaged Earth. But can the overburdened colony stand the strain of a thousand new arrivals, bringing with them the same problems they thought they were fleeing? Kate Elliott will be familiar to many of you for her epic fantasy trilogies, but she actually started her career writing science fiction. And on July 7th, she delivers a bold new space opera, Unconquerable Sun, described as a gender-swapped Alexander the Great saga on an interstellar scale. Princess Sun has finally come of age. But the Cutthroat Ambassador Corps has plans that need Sun to be removed as heir, or better yet, dead. To survive, the princess must rely on her wits and companions, her biggest rival, her secret lover, and a dangerous prisoner of war. Take the brilliance and cunning courage of Princess Leia, add in a dazzling futuristic setting where pop culture and propaganda are one and the same, and hold on tight. On July 14th, everyone's favorite Hugo and Nebula winning Lady Astronaut is back in The Relentless Moon. In the third installment of the alternate history saga of Elma York, the Earth is coming to the boiling point. 
as the climate disaster of the meteor strike becomes more and more clear. But the political situation is already overheated. Riots and sabotage plague the space program, the goal of getting as many people as possible off Earth before it becomes uninhabitable is being threatened. Moving into August, Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb have teamed up with Daw Books for Seven Devils, which I think is named after a Florence and the Machine song. It's the first book in a feminist space opera duology that follows seven resistance fighters who will free the galaxy from the ruthless Philosian Empire, or die trying. Our heroines are a crew of women who possess the knowledge and capabilities to bring the Empire to its knees. But the clock is ticking. The new heir to the Empire plans to disrupt a peace summit with the only remaining alien Empire, ensuring the Empire's continued expansion. If they can find a way to stop him, they'll save the galaxy. If they can't, millions may die. Back home on Earth, if you're in a dark mood and ready for some more of that good American dystopian dream, Christopher Brown is back on August 11th with Failed State. Now, this is the second in Chris's series about lawyer Danny Chemo, and these books have been described as 1984 meets Better Call Saul. Now, I reviewed Tropic of Kansas here already, and my review of Rule of Capture is coming soon. In Failed State, Donnie Chemo juggles two intertwined cases, whose outcomes will determine the course of the country's future in the aftermath of a second American Revolution. Heading back to space, Tor releases the debut of Karen Osborne on August 25th, Architects of Memory. Terminally ill salvage pilot Ash Jackson lost everything in the war with the alien Vi, but she'll be damned if she loses her future. Her plan? To buy, beg, or lie her way out of corporate indenture and find a cure. When her crew salvages a genocidal weapon from a ravaged starship above a dead colony, Ash uncovers a conspiracy of corporate intrigue and betrayal that threatens to turn her into a living weapon. September brings us one that looks like a true original from Angry Robot, Chris Panettiere's The Phlebotomist, on September 8th. In a near future where all citizens are subject to the mandatory blood draw, government phlebotomist Willa Wallace uncovers the truth about where the blood really goes. To support herself and her grandson Edwin, Willa works for the blood contractor Patriot. Patriot will do anything to protect its secret. On the run, and with nowhere else to turn, Willa seeks an alliance with Locke, a notorious blood hacker, who cheats the harvest to support the children orphaned by Patriot. But they soon find themselves in the grasp of a new type of evil. And last, but by no means least, Angry Robot looks to be bringing us a bit of pure action. In Ginger Smith's The Rush's Edge, a genetically engineered ex-soldier, with the help of his commanding officer, fights back against the government that created him, and others like him to be expendable slaves. But he has a new problem, when an alien presence gets downloaded into his ship's computers. If you enjoy things that go pew pew pew, well then put this one on your calendars for October the 13th. And that is it, gang! 30 works of new science fiction from all over the genre's vast creative spectrum. Now, of course, if there are any additional titles, as I said at the beginning of the video, that you are excited for that I didn't get to here, by all means, hit us up in the comments. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon where recruits into Winx Army get little perks like getting to see some of my videos early. I want to thank all of those people for their additional support. It is greatly appreciated. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see all of you next time, Merry Christmas, have a very safe holiday season, and Happy New Year.